Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Friday morning to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Feeling fantastic. I know I am. It's Friday morning. We all should be feeling pretty good, but I know not everybody's mood goes off the, the day of the week. I know it doesn't for me, really. I mean, Monday morning, I can feel great, just as good as I do on a Friday morning. Uh, so, But regardless, hope you guys are feeling well. And if you're not, I certainly hope your uh, morning and day gets better. We got a lot to talk about in this morning's video. As you can tell, there's about a a bajillion tabs pulled up so there's a lot to discuss we have an enhanced risk for a pretty large area millions of millions of people have the potential to be impacted by some severe weather large hail damaging winds by far the biggest threat obviously you can never rule out a tornado threat when you have a risk of uh, storms in general so we're going to talk about all in this video get detailed state by state if i miss any area just let me know if i butcher any names you guys are always great on letting me know in a very nice respectful way and I certainly take no offense to it because I am terrible with pronouncing really anything and spelling out anything. And when I'm doing it on the fly, if I think about it too much, um, then I'll mess up the flow of my video. And the flow of the video is everything when you're talking for 25 to 35 minutes straight and everything's flowing to your head at once. So uh, definitely correct me if I mess up your name, um, uh, name of your town. Uh, definitely not going to take offense to it at all. Um, if you folks have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. Um, and I just want to quickly mention, um, thank you guys for understanding, not pumping out a video every evening. It seems like over the last few weeks, I've only pumped out a, a video, maybe two evenings out the week or so, I think on average after looking, um, it, it I'll be honest with you guys, I always keep a, a personal feel to this channel. It's been nice just kind of coming home and not feeling like I have to make an evening video and I'll be completely honest with you guys. It was times in the past with this channel where I felt like I had to make a, a video to kind of keep up with other other channels and not really keep up with other channels but to really increase the growth of this channel i had to pump out as much content as um as possible but you know as the channel has grown and um you know just just with you guys uh, creating a family type atmosphere and really just the foundation we have set on this channel um you know i don't feel the pressure to do that anymore and um you know I, i've done a lot of praying about it and I feel like God has answered the prayers for me and you guys just praying over me and over my family. I really appreciate that. And, you know, I just I just don't feel the pressure to do it. Now, when the weather's active, of course, you know, we're going to do it on here. We're going to be on here and it is pretty active right now. But um, regardless, when it when it gets active in the tropics, uh, severe weather outbreaks and especially winter weather, because you guys know I love winter weather. We'll certainly be pumping out the two a days because um, I like to give you guys update information every 12 to 14 hours. I think that's important because things change a lot in a 24 hour period. So three minute intro. With that being said, you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over as always, please put those in the comments below. Let's get rolling here. Water vapor loop. So let's see if this will work for us this morning. I did update it and it is. So we're good to go. So if we look at what's going on here, and I'm going to try to draw a line here. Um, the ridge has weakened somewhat right now. Now it will flex again here in the coming days and we'll begin to get extremely hot again in the Southwest, unfortunately. And we'll talk about that in some coming videos, but, uh, the ridge is broad and it is going to begin and it already is weakened on the Eastern section of this. So I'll draw a line kind of like this. And then it, I would say it dips down like that and maybe goes sort of like this. Now there's a trough digging down from Canada. This will uh, bring some heat relief big time for the Northeast, even mid-Atlantic as we get to the latter half of the weekend. Everybody along this and south of this is very hot, uh, pretty humid, and just, um, yeah, it's not comfortable. Uh, but along this, this is basically where the energy flows. Okay, now there's a weakness developing right here in the ridge. Um, so things are beginning to take more of that northwest flow into this region right into here. So um, this is going to be sort of the epicenter of all the activity today where I kind of drew that line into also this region right now. I might as well just kind of move this into this region. This is basically an entire circle. This is going to be where all the the flow rolls. We got some enhanced uh, upper level flow that's really going to just put a kinematic really push in the atmosphere to get numerous uh, strong to severe storms going in this region today. And we definitely got to watch out for some kind of bowing out lines, basically some damaging winds with some of these lines of storms. If we look down here, we got a weak surface low that kind of developed off an old 
uh, frontal boundary. And this is actually pushing, and this has kind of been a wild card in the forecast here in Georgia and the Carolinas, I would say more so South Carolina. But this is pushing some moisture this morning into the low country of South Carolina, Georgia. Florida has been dealing with it. We'll deal with it again today. And uh, th- this will this will deliver some rain and so maybe maybe cooler temperatures just because clouds and rain cover down here in this region. So this is kind of what's going on here uh, today uh, based off water vapor loop, which I always like to try to explain, get a little bit more scientific with you guys, if you will. Uh, but you look at what's actually falling out there on the surface. We got an area of, of showers, even some storm activity in North Dakota. And you notice this is flowing more west to east up here. And then the action down here, more um, northwest to uh, southeast down here that's what we call that northwest flow it's beginning to dig down here it's a little bit of enough of a weakness down here in the ridge to to sort of kind of dig into that ridge if you will if that makes any sense uh but a, a lot of storm activity and kind of areas right now of the country chicago northern indiana northern illinois uh even some showers have moved out Rain has moved out of southern Wisconsin, moving into southwest areas of Michigan. This same area, we'll see it again later on. Now, what does this morning rain do to the afternoon and evening convection? That's always something we got to figure out as the hours pass throughout the day of the severe weather event. But we'll figure that out here in due time. And then check this out. A lot of shower activity. We need some rain up here, I know, in central South Carolina. This is the time of the year where it's so hot. If you go three, four, five days without a drop of rain, I mean, your grass gets crunchy. I mean, it's just so hot out there. Um, But, you know, you got this little spin out here, upper level spin that's uh, trying to move northward. Well, it already is with some moisture associated with it into Georgia and South Carolina. Storm Prediction Center today. All right. So you got the marginal risk that expands from southern, basically the southern half of Montana, all the way to the mid Atlantic region. In between it, you got a slight risk that extends from sections of Nebraska and South Dakota, all the way into Northwest areas of PA, all the way, basically includes the entire uh, Southern half of Michigan, all the way up to um, uh, the South Central regions of, uh, of, of, I'm sorry, I'm brain farting here, of Wisconsin. And then the slight risk extends into the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. Enhanced risk right in the middle, level three out of five, Des Moines. Iowa's a tricky state today, but I'll talk about it. But Iowa is a very tricky state. There's a lot of short range model guidance. Doesn't show much at all happening in Iowa, but the Storm Prediction Center has a lot of the state in the enhanced risk. So, and that leads me to say what I always say a reminder Storm Prediction Center does another update around 8 45, 9 a.m. Eastern Time every day so i'm making this video you know around 7 a.m eastern time so it's not that i deliberately give you guys uh, old information if you notice this looks different from the current um storm prediction center update it's just that it you know it updates especially the day of a severe weather event but enhanced risk in this region tornado threat less than two percent risk which is kind of rare when you have an enhanced risk but not much of a tornado threat today but it's not non-existent the wind threat there is a 30% risk in this red area of winds exceeding 50 knots or higher. That's 55 to 60 miles per hour. That includes, you know, the northern half of Iowa, sections of very small section of southeast South Dakota, northeast uh, Nebraska, all of northern Illinois, southern sections, sections of um, Wisconsin, including almost to Milwaukee, but does include uh, Chicago. And then you got the 15% risk of that same criteria that extends all the way into Ohio and Michigan and to northwest uh, PA hell threat. They're saying the biggest threat is going to be right into here today. Okay, 15% risk of hell, exceeding one inch in diameter or larger in the yellow area, but in the Hatch region area, that is a 10% risk of significant hell. Okay, Sioux Falls, down the Norfolk, uh, Nebraska, places like that, you know, you got a significant chance of hell today, some larger hell. Man, but there's some just differences between the model guides I, i'll tell you that and there's just not showing a lot of coverage in this area today so I, that's why i'm thinking they're going to shift this outlook some in the coming update that, that's literally what i'm thinking but we'll see we'll see um slight risk for excessive rainfall excessive rainfall being exceeded that means in the yellow area you have a 15 percent risk of that so there's going to be a chance for some flooding today we'll watch out for that uh watches warnings advisories very hot in the uh, uh, the pink colors right in here, if you want to call this purple. Um, that's excessive heat warning, so extremely hot conditions, well over 100 degrees for a lot of these areas. And even into the heat advisory regions in the orange, you could certainly get temperatures over 100 degrees. Look at those excessive heat warnings up for areas of the mid-Atlantic, eastern Virginia, 
Maryland, up into extreme southeast PA and New Jersey, even at several counties here in northeast North Carolina, heat advisories. It's very hot, very hot day today. The good news for the northeast mid-Atlantic, relief is coming into the weekend. We'll talk about that, like I said, in some coming videos. Storm prediction, I'm sorry, the National Hurricane Center update. This is now up to a 50% chance of developing. It's not an invest as of right now, I don't think. I didn't look deep into it, I'll be honest with you guys. But as of 2 a.m., this has a 50% risk of development. After the models kind of dropped off for um, showing showing chances of development, they have increased a little bit overnight. But we look at what's going on out there. What I'll tell you is, is this is the wave. See the white colors that indicates more moisture in the atmosphere based off the, the water vapor loop. But you see this little thing right here kind of bowing down and spinning. That is what we call it. We can call it a tut. We can call it a an upper level low. We call it a wave breaker. There's some, you know, uh, definitely some different terminology out there that folks in the weather community use. And basically, this acts as a an area of shear. And I think that this is going to interact with this somewhat and really prevent it, kind of in the short and medium term, from really development developing. Unlike some of the other models, uh, kind of suggested maybe several days back. Okay, so. Uh, Will it develop? It's a big question, but it might not develop until it gets and starts to turn and head back out into the North Atlantic. We'll see what happens, though. So let's discuss the North Central U.S. first, and we will discuss the severe weather threat with this. So I know this is a little different. Normally, we talk about the Southeast first, but in this video, we're going to break down the severe weather risk first. So we'll get this in time. We'll take a broad look like we always do. Some showers, that the, that area of showers and storms will continue to weaken in uh, North Dakota, we'll get some storm action, maybe as far north as central Minnesota today, as you can see, storms popping up. But look at these storms firing here in Wisconsin, and these look intense. Based off the latest long-range HRRR model, Wisconsin looks like a big state for severe weather today, central to southern Wisconsin. It really does. And these kind of cluster up, head towards Chicago, Milwaukee. Um, but one thing that I'm noticing, there's not much storm, and, and we're going to zoom into each area. So so hold tight. If you're a new viewer, if, you, if you're not, you know that I do zoom in. If you're a new viewer, hold tight with me. We're going to zoom into all these areas, okay? Iowa's a weird area. It doesn't show much storm development. In fact, barely even shows a storm developing anywhere in this area where there's a significant risk of hail or wind, okay? So so it's it's weird. Now, it does show some powerful storms developing here in um, eastern Nebraska, like into the wee hours of the morning, well after midnight tonight. So, you know, this would be something that we need to watch out for, for Omaha, uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, places like that. But, you know, I would say, you know, in, in the daylight hours, even into the evening hours, even into the overnight hours, not a whole lot. Okay. So let's go on and zoom in. All right. Let's talk about Iowa. Let's talk about Iowa first. Start off this morning and, um, We'll get this in motion, and okay, we're, we're all the way at about 4 p.m. Central Time. Remember, this uh, time frame timestamp over here shows in Eastern Time. I can't change it to uh, Central Time. I've tried. Maybe you can, but I don't know how. So um, this is in Central Time. We're in Iowa, so this is 4 p.m. The only thing I'm seeing around 4 p.m. is some big-time storms uh, just, just north of Dubuque. I think that's how you pronounce that area, that uh, town in Iowa. But Waterloo, I mean, the storm's not even close to you guys. And these things really just stay in Wisconsin. I mean, you keep going through the evening hours. And some storms do form in northeast Iowa, um, begin to, you know, kind of ride that um, eastern state line in Iowa, get close to the Dubuque area, get close to Cedar Rapids around 9 p.m., start getting close to uh, the Davenport, Clinton areas. But, man, it, it doesn't show anything back here. It doesn't show anything. Remember, there's an enhanced risk that extends all the way back into, you know, eastern Nebraska, even sections of uh, southeast uh, South Dakota. So the latest HRRR model, now it does bring some big time storms around 4 a.m. back here into the north, the southwest portion of Iowa. But the latest HRRR model, and then, and then it rides throughout southern Iowa, the latest HRRR model says, I mean, uh, you're not going to get much today, Iowa. Now, that's not what Mitch is saying. Uh, you need to listen to the experts at Storm Prediction Center, but I'm just telling you, you know, this run of the HRRR model, not liking the idea of storms today, which would be good news. Um, you look at the NAM. We get all the way to 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m. Um, there is some storms firing here um, just west of Des Moines, south of Ames. Okay, a little bit different here. 
uh, does some show some storm action right here in kind of west central Iowa, and uh, they, they do some weird funky things. It's like they develop, and uh, the NAM is everywhere. But in, in general, it, it does show some scattered, strong potential severe storms in the enhanced area of Iowa. Okay, even some storms down there in Missouri, and then we get to 10 p.m. shows a uh, maybe a pretty intense area of storms around 10 p.m. working through Waterloo, heading towards eastern Iowa. So. You know, it's very weird, and uh, both model guidance does show some storms down here in southwest Iowa as we get into the wee hours of the morning. So, Iowa's a weird state. I know you're thinking, well, Mitch, that doesn't help me much. Well, it, it doesn't help me much either because the model guidance is everywhere. Um, I mean, even if you look at the old FV3 model about what it thinks is going to happen today, um, I would say that, hey, okay, it, it, it blows up some storms. Here we go, around 6 p.m., and kind of the southern sections of Iowa. So this model is even more different than the other two. It says, hey, you guys are going to get some big storms actually in the slight risk in Iowa, not really so much the enhanced risk area, okay? But what's always important, guys, is you don't always look at model guidance. It's the day of the event. You just really look at what real-time observations are. And, you know, I'm never going to tell you, hey, you know, guys, don't don't watch my channel because it doesn't mean much the day of, but it does. But what I am going to say is be careful with your weather apps. That's why it's important to have a radar on your phone. They're dirt cheap, and some of them are just flat out free. I don't always recommend the Weather Channel app. I know a lot of people love to use the, use that Futurecast on the Weather Channel app. And, I, I mean, if, if you like it, you like it. I'm not going to tell you not to look at it. I mean, even if I do, I don't know if you're going to uh, care if I tell you that. <laughs> but it's it's just, to me, I'll be honest, it's bogus. Um, but... It's just important to have a radar um, to, to really look at and see exactly what's happening. Um, but here we go. Let's look at Wisconsin. Wisconsin, if the HRIPR model is correct, could get quite active. We'll start it right here. It's 1 p.m. You already got some powerful storms developing north of the Madison area. Okay. These are moving through. Um, I mean, this looks like a little mini supercell right here. Um, kind of south of what is it? Oshkosh. Um, kind of between the, the well... I would say, yeah, it's just south of Oshkosh, uh, moving through. And I hate to name specific towns and cities when the radar is probably going to look totally different. But just trying to give you an idea. Um, you got some storms basically in central Wisconsin popping off. You got a strong storm, maybe strong to severe storm, moving through a close to Milwaukee later on. And then, bang, 5 p.m. Look at these. Man, if the h r bar mall is uh, correct, you're going to have some trouble here in Wisconsin later this afternoon into this evening. Okay, you got some powerful storms developing um, and moving in. Janesville, the Madison region, Stevens Point, Point South. And uh, look, just look at all these storms. They blast through and they really cluster up together. I mean, this is 7 p.m. Damaging winds, very large hail as possible, especially when you see these highlight colors in pink and white. Um, it shows a very active afternoon and evening for the southern half of Wisconsin. I mean, really active in, in Janesville, Madison, Milwaukee. I know those are more commonly known areas in southern Wisconsin, but, you know, just everybody in this entire region could be very active if this is correct. correct. Okay, and you do got some storms popping off here in southeast areas of Minnesota. You know, Rochester region, definitely want to watch out. And then these move on out. Okay, you know, we look at the NAM, and I'm, I'm not going to spend too long. Well, this video will go on for um, a million years here, but um, it does show pretty active conditions based off the NAM. It just obviously shows a little bit of a different scenario, um, but does show some storms um, for basically the southern half of Iowa all throughout the late afternoon, evening hours time frame too. Just doesn't look quite as scary as the HRR model. Okay, so um, got to watch out. We're going to show impacts here in a second. Let's look at Michigan really quick, and then we'll we'll go down further south to Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio. Okay, I think Michigan, based off the HRR model, we take it to about 6 p.m. Not a whole lot going on, but it very well could be. I think we could get some sales popping off here in southern Michigan. Uh, for you folks down here, you know, Grand Rapids, Kalamazoo, and Ann Arbor, um, you guys could see it some storm action as early as maybe late afternoon. And then if the HRR model is correct, by the time we get into 9 p.m., all these strong showers and storms that, are, that cluster up over Lake Michigan begin to head into western Michigan, and that is when it could get quite active in Holland, Grand Rapids, like I said, Kalamazoo, uh, basically um, western and southwestern Michigan could get quite active. And then this could cluster up into a nasty line of storms for southern Michigan and then cruise through all the 
uh, towns and communities in southern Michigan, you know, like Kalamazoo, Ann Arbor, and eventually make it into Detroit as we make it into after the midnight time frame. And this could drop a lot of rain. If I look at the National Weather Service as far as how much rain could fall, I'll show you here in a second. Uh, I would say that the the National Weather Service, which is the professionals, human beings, not models, um, are going more so towards the h r model based off how much rain they're thinking is going to fall. So, you know, it's kind of weird because that's kind of conflicting with the Storm Prediction Center, but we'll see. Um, but shows a lot of heavy rain moving through and a lot of storm activity later this evening in southern Wisconsin. So be careful with that. Um, we look down at Illinois, Indiana, Ohio. Okay. We get into late morning, early afternoon. Not a whole lot going on. Okay. You're thinking, where's the storms? Okay. And then we get into, remember, there's a lot of activity ongoing right now in this area. Okay. Okay. But then we start to get to 4 p.m., 5 p.m. Okay, this is 5 p.m. Look, we got a pretty powerful storm developing uh, based off the H triple R model. I'm going to say that over and over again. Right here along the Ohio, Indiana state line. What is that? Right along, um, right around the Richmond area. I haven't mentioned that town ever before in Indiana. Right around the Richmond area. Got a storm developing. Th these could be very isolated at first before this main area clusters up based off the H triple R model and heads downstream. But even before uh, this area of um, strong to severe storms develops. Ah, I got a sneeze coming. Let's see if it happens. Okay, we're good. Uh, um, in western Iowa, um, eastern sections of Indiana, even southern Michigan, like we just mentioned, I mean, we got some strong to severe storms very scattered out there already around 7 p.m. Fort Wayne, uh, Dayton, uh, was that Muncie, Muncie, uh, Indiana. Some storms firing off here, maybe up there to Toledo also. Um, but really, this all these all connect at some point. Then you just basically have a huge corridor of showers and storms. I mean, if the H triple R model is correct today, it, it's going to be very stormy up here in this portion of the country. Damaging winds, that large hail. I mean, that's why you got the slight risk that extends all the way into western PA. So um, this continues. Um, you know, we get into the late evening hours, 10, 11 p.m., and you're just dealing with a ton of showers and storms from Chicago all the way through Ohio. Chicago, you got to watch out. Could get very active um, tonight, maybe as early as late afternoon. But we could get some big, uh, big storms. You know, Rockford, uh, Chicago. Um, I, I say it gets pretty active for you folks um, right after rush hour, maybe before, maybe a little after. And I would say the biggest storm coverage for that area will be around that time frame. But you got to note, note here, okay? Um, a lot of Illinois, okay? Let me let me go back and look. You know, the, the slight risk extends all the way almost down to Springfield, Illinois. It definitely includes Peoria. So, you know, you go back here. Um, it doesn't show much storm action even making it down there, right? So, you know, it, it's kind of weird. We got to figure that out. Um, you know, and, and the NAM. I definitely want to show the NAM for this because the NAM shows something totally different. The NAM for this region um, shows a pretty potent line of storms blasting through kind of the same area where it showed the pop-up storm around Richmond, Indiana, but shows a area of storms developing as early as 3 p.m., kind of around the Fort Wayne, Indiana area, and uh, kind of cruising down the Indiana, uh, Ohio state line, and then eventually oozing down into and across basically the entire state of Ohio throughout the evening hours, making it all the way down to, I mean, uh, making it all the way down to northern Kentucky, you know, Cincinnati, um, uh, cruising through Columbus throughout the evening hours. So, and then it has these other little clusters right here, going through Chicago, northern Illinois, northern Indiana. The NAM is just everywhere. Um, but eventually, you know, around 1 a.m. does have a pretty put together, pretty decent put together line of storms that's sweeping through the Illinois Indiana. So listen, guys, model guidance is everywhere. We'll just leave it at that. But if we're going off the H triple R model, okay, it likes a corridor from southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois, through um, Indiana, southern sections of Michigan, all the way to Ohio um, for a corridor of damaging winds. Even though the damaging wind threat is more so back over here. Doesn't really show anything. I mean, it does. It has the 15% risk, but it shows most of it over Iowa, which is, I don't know. They're the they're the experts for a reason. They're seeing something we aren't. 
Um, but man, I'm interested to see if this this extends or tweaks or cuts off over here. It's a it's a weird setup, very odd. Okay, but um, you know you're going to have 50, 60, maybe 70 mile per hour wind gusts with some of these storms. I especially watch out early in southern Wisconsin. I think that you could get some very large hail too. But I know I'm not mentioning Iowa much. Um, but I'm, Iowa could very well get just disrupt a uh, uh, big time storms today. It's just the model guidance really isn't showing it. But based off the National Weather Service, it likes, like I said, the HRRR model solution and shows a lot of rain falling. I mean, a lot of this has already fallen this morning, but shows more rain falling later on today. Southern Wisconsin, another inch, inch and a half of rain is possible in southern Wisconsin, uh, northern Illinois, um, you know, an inch or so of rain is possible in northern Indiana. And then a lot of rain could potentially fall in southern, especially southeast. Um, Michigan throughout the next 24 hours. So we take a look at the ingredients for this really quick. And it's, I mean, I wouldn't say it's, it's, it's very simple, but really what you watch here is this is the kinematics. So this shows the flow aloft and you keep this in motion. And then those kind of purple, dark purple, pinkish region, that is where our flow is. Okay. And where our flow is, is where we have the lift for storms. So you keep this in motion and here it is like the exit region right here where you basically have the impulse of the strongest winds aloft. This is where the HRRR model is saying that this is where you're going to have your big time storm development right here in Wisconsin. This is going to be the kind of the initializer, if you will, that's going to start, you know, a downstream effect of all these showers and storms. But I mean, you got a 40, 50 knot mid-level jet and uh, you notice that it looks kind of zonal, meaning west to east, but you know, it begins to dig more so out the northwest to the southeast, as you can tell. Uh, these isobars, um, not the isobars, the wind barbs kind of begin to shoot and uh, show winds out the northwest uh, more so. Well, well, with this morning, they're more so kind of west to east. So this huge area of winds aloft will mix the surface with some of these storms. And you're going to have a belt of northwesterly flow that's going to move across this entire region today. And we're going to have some big time storms for sure. You mix that with the thermodynamics. And remember, we have kind of a stalled frontal boundary with this trough to the north and ridge to the south. And, and right where they kind of connect, that's where we have a frontal boundary. So this separates kind of somewhat moist air with very moist air, tropical moist air. And with the HRRR model, which doesn't do great with dew points, I might add, shows this kind of belt of uh, very moist air. Uh, this is kind of weird down here, very dry air, but you know, typically when it's really, really hot, the dew points are a little bit lower. But you see these dew points in the 50s up here in the UP of Michigan, low 60s in northern Wisconsin. This will kind of save you guys from the severe weather today. But you start to dip south, you got dew points in the low 70s in southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois, Iowa areas, even southern um, Minnesota, and then the Ohio Valley Midwest regions. Very moist air. This will create a highly unstable atmosphere and we look at the cape levels already this morning very high um but you look at the cape levels by the time we get into this afternoon okay and um southern wisconsin over 3,000 to 3,500 joules per kilogram and this is why they're going for such a big time storm risk in northern iowa you got cape values with a flow aloft re reaching over 4,000 joules per kilogram so there's ingredients to the atmosphere it's just can we get these storms to develop is there a little bit of a cap in place to prevent storm development I would say there probably will be, but um, does that all the altogether prevent storm development? Uh, I don't think so, but um, we'll see what happens. But then we got some high cap, cape levels down here in Indiana, and cape levels is basically think of that as just fuel in the atmosphere. The higher that number is, the more fuel in the atmosphere that these storms that do form can tap into. So, hope that helps you guys. Uh, definitely. Uh, stay weather aware out up there in that portion of the country. Let's talk about the southeast. We got this spin right here. This is bringing some moisture already to the Georgia and low country south of South Carolina um, coastline. This will continue. We'll see. I, I really hope this area of rain makes it up to <laughs> my area in central South Carolina. But this is really the only storyline of southeast today. I think some more showers and storms will get going. We'll get going in Florida today. Uh, very tropical like air, like air mass down here. And I think, you know, in the deep south states up to the southern apps, you could get some pop-up downpours that are quite possible. Uh, we'll see what this rain does in here. And, you know, we'll zoom into the deep south, give you guys a little bit of love. Haven't showed you guys much in the last few videos. But as you can tell, boom. Uh, scattered to, you know, isolated to maybe scattered showers and storms could pop up. These will be very popcorn in nature. But, you know, anywhere 
and Mississippi and Alabama, Georgia. It's it's possible. Okay, very possible. Um, but you know, there's chan- the chances are higher that you won't get any rain that you then then that you will get rain in these areas. Probably you'll probably look at your weather app in these areas of the country today, and there's probably a lot of twenty to thirty percent chance of rain. Uh, Florida, though, very active. Um, I think more storm activity will get popping off here in southern sections of Florida today. I think it'll be very uh, the it'll be very juiced up atmosphere down here. That there'll be a lot of downpour, a lot of storm activity, and basically all of the uh, peninsula of Florida. But I think it's possible also in the Panhandle of Florida, you guys could be uh, somewhat active, but more so uh, widespread here in the peninsula of Florida. Anybody who's basically in this portion of Florida will definitely have a pretty solid chance of rain today. The Carolinas, Georgia, we'll watch this area. I think it's going to be a pretty rainy um, Friday from Charleston Point southeast down the South Carolina to, to Georgia coastline. If it's not raining, it'll be very cloudy. You might get some breaks in the clouds maybe later this evening as the sun is setting. Some storms are possible here in the southwest mountains of uh, North Carolina. Um, we'll watch as this rain tries to make it into kind of the PD central sections of South Carolina later today. Um, not sure if it's going to make it, um, but if it does, if it doesn't, it'll at least bring some cloud cover. And I think this will prevent temperatures from really rising too high in these sections right into here. Uh, the Northeast, most of the day is pretty quiet. There's some flow aloft up here that will, uh, create some stormy a stormy afternoon up here in northern Maine and then we'll watch later tonight this afternoon for the mid-atlantic but then later tonight for Ohio maybe uh, western PA West Virginia as these storms will try to make their way into the night let's zoom into a couple of these regions let's talk about um, well no I meant to have let's see let's talk about the mid-atlantic first mid-atlantic you guys could just see some a typical kind of summer pop-up storms. There's, a, there's enough flow aloft. I think northern VA around the Washington, D.C. area and two sections of Maryland, central Maryland, could see some storms this afternoon into early this evening. And then I think you'll get a lull until we get into the overnight hours. And then I think eventually some powerful storms that could still be pretty strong uh, could make their way into West Virginia. So, you know, West Virginia might not get a drop of rain today, but after midnight tonight, <clears throat> Almost the entire state has a chance to see strong to severe storms later tonight. Okay, so we'll watch for those. Some gusty winds, heavy rain, uh, maybe some hail as possible. I would watch out later tonight after midnight for West Virginia for some storms. We go up into Pennsylvania. I think it takes to about... Now, you can't rule out some storms down here in southern PA later today, later later this evening. So, but as we get into the overnight hours, into the wee hours of the morning, I think we'll be dealing with some storms... Um, potentially in all of Pennsylvania, by the time we're waking up, by the time we're getting up to about 7, 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, I think pretty much all of the state of Pennsylvania uh, might have already been dealing with at least some rain activity. Okay, this will move in from the west, scoot across the state from the west to the east, and uh, even up here in the, uh, you know, if you're in the southwest, southern tier, Finger Lakes region of New York State, you know, Buffalo, um, I think you guys uh, could see some, could, could wake up to some storms around 4, 5, 6 a.m. tomorrow. We'll see what the radar looks like as we're waking up tomorrow morning and uh, certainly some severe weather possible as you're waking up tomorrow. Maine, uh, just a little bit of flow aloft. Uh, we'll get the atmosphere juiced up enough for you folks up in Maine to get some storms. Uh, I think northern Maine to western Maine will be favored. I think these could make it all the way down to the down east sections of Maine later on this evening. But, uh, you know, some small hail as possible, some gusty winds. Nothing too crazy. Just enjoy some summer storms up here in the state of Maine. I'd love to get up here and visit one day. I definitely would. Uh, but the temperatures are going to be a big storyline on their own. I think Washington, D.C., areas of uh, Virginia, the Delmarva region, New Jersey, southeast um, Pennsylvania. I, I, heck, even... Um, the the eastern panhandle of um, West Virginia. I think someone could get into the upper 90s, definitely, but someone could hit 100 degrees easily today in this region of the country. Very hot, excessive heat warnings and heat advisories up for many people in this region. Be careful out here. South Central U.S., quiet day, except in New Mexico. Well, once again, you'll kind of get that monsoon, uh, kind of monsoon uh, moisture out here um, that will flow throughout the state and then weaken with the loss of daytime heating. And, uh, yeah, not, not a whole lot going down here for you folks in Texas, Oklahoma, pretty quiet. You guys, you know, been pretty quiet over the last several days. It's not, have not 
have a whole lot to speak on. The Northern Plains, we'll watch. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they issue a slight risk inside this marginal risk out here. I think we could get some storms in, in southeast sections of uh, Wyoming. Uh, these storms could eventually get stronger downstream as uh, they work throughout the overnight hours throughout the entire state of Nebraska. And I think that these could pack a punch, you know, uh, you know, watch out if you're in the southern half of uh, Nebraska later overnight. You might get woken up by some big time storms, and it can be quite active around 4, 5, 6 a.m. in the Lincoln, Omaha region as we wait, make our way into tomorrow, um, tomorrow morning. But um, we definitely could get some storms in southern Montana today. You guys have a marginal risk, and I think we're going to get a cluster of storms that sweeps through the southern half of Montana. Um, I think they get. I think they, they form around 5, 6 p.m., sweep across this entire region right into here. We get into the evening. We get into around the midnight time frame. They start knocking on the door of the uh, Dakotas, and uh, they could be strong and severe in this entire region today, make their way eventually into South Dakota, but they could still be packing a punch into the wee hours of the morning uh, tomorrow morning. So, Western U.S., uh, typical kind of – flow not as much moisture today i think we could get some showers and storms in eastern colorado new mexico not quite as showery or stormy in utah today but you'll, you'll get it again here in uh, arizona portions of the state maybe a strong storm or two in, in southern sections of arizona outside of that um everybody else remains pretty calm temperatures very hot south of this boundary and along it so missouri areas of illinois Nebraska, um, Kansas, Oklahoma. Uh, this will be the epicenter of the worst heat today. Temperatures into the upper 90s, low 100s. Very hot everywhere else, too. I mean, very hot in the Mid-Atlantic. Mid-Atlantic will be a hot spot today. You see this little cold pocket of cooler air. I wouldn't say cold, but cooler air down here in the Carolinas and southeast Georgia. That is just with a lot of rain and cloud cover will keep you guys cool. I would say North Dakota is the breadwinner today with temperatures. Only temperatures in the 60s and 70s for highs is very nice. Bacon down here in the southwest, the um, high plains, all the way up to about the central high plains is pretty hot. But you get up into Montana and uh, just temperatures in the 80s and just typical summer type conditions in the northwest. Man, that was a mouthful. God bless all y'all. Have a great Friday and I'll talk to you soon. Stay safe out there.